percent of it's live, meaning it's some kind of explosives. Uh, a lot of it is stuff that you guys have brought home in your garage. <laughs> and people are cleaning out and we have, to, we have to take care of which is not a problem for us. We have a really hard, a really good liaison with the military. So if it's something that we can take care of, that's fine. If not, we, we help. The military comes out and helps us. Uh, right now where you guys are, are all standing is the big Pierce truck, this black truck like this has all our robots. And it has Pieces, they, they're workhorses. Uh, one of the uh, gentlemen asked me, does this thing go out all the time? It does. It goes out all the time. Uh, the, the big truck is, there's a photo of it in, on the hallway that has our, that has three main robots. Uh, we do a lot of robotic stuff. A lot of robotic stuff. I get to fix it when we break it. LAPD bomb squad, we use this a lot. This thing's been used, it's about, I brought it back about four years old and we've used it probably about 50 times. Uh, another uh, uh, thing uh, looks like it's uh, kind of like a robot. She basically explained to you guys how the bomb squad works. Oh, and no. <laughs> that's the um, there's three functions within this division. There's the bomb squad, which are the, the uh, bomb technicians, and there's the hazmat guys. They deal with obviously hazardous materials, and then the, the third component is the bomb canine handlers. Yeah. We're a unit composed of about 15 uh, bomb handlers with three supervisors. We have citywide jurisdiction. Primarily, we're assigned to LAX, and we all have what's called uh, single-purpose bomb detection canines. Sorry, do the dogs come already trained or do we train the dogs here? The dogs come imprinted on explosives only. That's it. So all the dogs know after that time at Lackland Air Force Base or, or Von Lick Kennels in Indiana or the military, it's just basic odor recognition. So they only know the, the 20 to 30, 40 plus explosive odors that we have them trained on. That's it. As far as anything else, that's up to us. And that's why they give us about a good year to get the dogs trained before they go through certification. But they are trained up on basic explosive odor and, and that's about it. And that's, you know, wherever you get them from. Passenger tire. Can everyone see it? Yep. Oh yeah. Lucy, a three-year-old female lab and we got her from uh, Von Lake Kennels in Indiana. So she's not currently certified right now. We're still in the training process of about another uh, eight to ten weeks left of training before they're going to come out and certify us. But she is our uh, our newest addition to the uh, to the ESD bomb bomb canine family. So basically, we just got a radio call and the bomb squad guy said, "Hey, there's a vehicle over here, Tom. I want you to go check it out with your, with your uh, canine. We're going to go up and run it, and we'll see what happens." Black guy, glad you're great. He's sniffing already. <laughs>
give her that physical touch, that physical praise, because that's what she really wants too. Because she wants to have that that bonding and that gameplay with me, and that's what keeps her interested in doing this job. So you know, like anything, it can become a job after a while. You want it to be fun. What, what is the range? How close does she have to be to the actual package before she can smell? That there's a few factors there. Number one, the amount of explosive odor, and number two, the wind and the environmental conditions. Because if it's a very windy day. That wind, because the explosive particles are heavier than air. So after a while, they'll tend to kind of drop. So if it's a real windy day, those particles will, will blow and will have like what they call a scent cone, which is a really wide scent cone. And if it's a pretty windy day and it's a good amount of odor, if that bag right here on a really windy day, I started coming in that gate there, she could already start picking it up. Oh, wow. She would already start, her head would go up, she'd start casting, she'd start bracketing. And the bracket would be very wide in the beginning, and as she got closer to that bag, it would get very narrow until she finally sat. So it's called bracketing. So she'd bracket, and as she got closer, the bracket would get smaller, and then she'd sit. And that helps me as a handler know how close I am. So anyway, guys, um, it was great meeting everyone. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone wants to take any photos, please feel free. Very cool. You see four helicopters. Five, six. Where's my limo chopper? No bus chopper? I can't believe the bus chopper. I believe you're the first one. That's what they told us. Nobody's been on. Button facing me. Let's move in. You look 10 pounds skinnier. Turn your belly button. Oh, don't turn too far. You look better. Bigger. Come on this side. Put your belly button in here. I'm going to be here. Squeeze in, guys. We're going to get a photo. Okay. Thank you, guys. Which way you want us? Which way you want us? This way or this way? Mike, I'm over here. Why are you photographing over there? Okay. <laughs> I took one of my kids. Good. Blocking her shots. We've got a lot of Hey, stand by. What's the photo with that? Yeah. Oh, I oh, I she was right through me. Don't worry about me. Where is Dermot Collins? Just went like that. Oh, guys. I'm so happy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get the oh, center. Yeah. Oh, center. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me know when Mike, we can do Mike, video, back up, Alan. You, please? Yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike. Wings over Wendy's. We rock. Yeah. One, two, three. Wings over Wendy's, we rock! <laughs> Got it? Round of applause! I uh, flew in Iraq and flew all over that side. I did uh, two tours in Korea and a tour in Central America. I wore the 7th ID patch for a while. Thank you, sir. And uh, stationed at Fort Riley, big red one. And uh, let's see, 7th. Uh, Seventh big red one. Like I said, uh, I did medevac and attack battalion in Korea as a camp page. Camp Humphreys, Fort Stewart, uh, Columbia, Honduras. So been around a little bit in the military. Enjoyed it. Loved it. Does the uh, helicopter out of Van Nuys patrol over the West Valley? All, all the patrols launch out of here. Advance. That's our main maintenance facility. Who flies over the rest of the One comes over my house. Yeah, it could be any of these guys. Uh, all the way from here. Yes, all the way from here. They launch out of here several times a day. Uh, we, we try to launch three at a time. One will go to the valley, one will stay really? mid-city, and one will go to the south end. Always glad. Uh, pilot rank is going from military to now we're mostly civilian pilots. So there's very few of us military guys left. What, what are the qualifications for a civilian? Well, what we've done is we've adapted the uh, Army Aviation 
uh, center for Fort Rucker, way of uh, training pilots. And we'll take guys from zero time. All of our supervisors, sergeants and above, they come up here with no experience at all. We treat them just like a Rucker warrant officer candidate and, and run them through the ranks until they uh, get their wings. Uh, we run through. Now, of course, my 3,000 hour guys will graduate quicker. Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> no, not, not always. Yeah, this is a place. Got our own private room. How it? We're sitting at that table here. Where are we sitting? Take any table you want. South son of the American Legion. Uh, my kid's mother's father was the uh, 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 first African American commander of the uh, 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 what's it called again? The organization? American Legion. The dog. The dog. What was it specifically about the dog? How well trained he is. How well trained he is. That's awesome. Kids are awesome. Our bus driver. Great. Great. <laughs> bus driver. Tell us about the bus driver. He's good. Good bus driver. When he turned left, we all went left. When he turned right, we all went right. Anything else? Yes, please. Um, but I wanted to tell a little bit about my family history first. My uh, grandparents came over here on a steamship in like 1913 or something like that. And they, they were farmers up in Sacramento. They had nine kids. And I wanted to share this picture with you because these are my, this is my father here. He was in the Navy in, in the Korean War. And my uncle was in, the, in World War II. He was in the Air Force. Um, my other uncle was in the Army in World War II. And he was a Marine. And, Korean War, so they were all kind of in the service at the same time. And this picture was taken when my dad was on leave from Korea. He was over in Incheon and he came back on leave and his brothers, they all got their uniforms on and, and somebody took their picture and it's the only picture we have of them together and, and representing all the branches of the service. Wow. Yeah. So here they start 30 and maybe 15 graduates. Or at times, because there's other classes that keep their 30. How many women? Oh, my class had 10. System anyhow, right? Where's he going? Shit. They want to meet you. You're a celebrity. Two bloodhounds, which are tracking the dogs. This is a bloodhound. Her name is Sage. Um, she is eight, eight years old. 
she we've had her ever since she was a puppy and uh she's used to uh, just to uh track human scent from point hi sweetie missing kids hi baby hi baby yeah, you love that, don't you? You love that. I think I'm going to take her home. So I'm going to collect a bunch of set items from all you guys right now. So when I get called out, I'll be able to help you guys all out. When they show in the movies, the prisoners escape and they go in the stream. For when we're out searching, because we search off leash. So we need to make sure that when we're doing all our searches, that when we tell them to do something, they need to do it. Because in case they're running down the street, some, some citizen walks out of their house, we need to make sure that we can stop them because we uh, don't have any accidents out there. He's very okay. Give him a treat. Sit down. It's a Kong he's got. So he's going to command him. Yeah, he's here. 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 Yeah, He's searching up the trash cans. The dog is searching that entire area while the, while the handler stays back here and lets him work out the scent picture if he has it. So, what does he actually know with? They're, they're trained to find hidden human scent. Uh, over time, over time, they get used to the actual suspect scent. We call it fear scent, but it, that's not a technical term. It's basically because of hands on human scent. And uh, it's a little bit harder for him because he knows this is a training environment, he knows this field, so we train here all the time. A real suspect hiding would be a lot easier for the dog because he really knows that's what he would have something coming. <laughs> 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 there's somebody hiding in there. So it took him a little while because it is hot out, but he finally narrowed on exactly where the guy theoretically is hiding. The handler's trying to read what the dog has given him. He calls him back because he believes he knows where the guy is now. In, in a typical search, the handler would have to read oh. 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 Both cats, they either do one or the other. Do you have a particular diet for the dog? They all use the same food, except for two of our dogs have, have uh, allergy issues yeah. with certain foods. But most of our dogs use the same kind uh, because the city provides the money to pay for the dog food. What kind of uh, We just switched to natural balance. Sure. Yeah. It's, a dry, it's a dry dog food. It's a dry dog food, yes. Yeah. She's been trained to locate black smokeless powder. Stand still, please. That, yeah. The way that works with law enforcement is a lot of times police officers are chasing bad guys that are armed and they decide to discard firearms or they use uh, firearms in the commission of a crime and then they discard those firearms. A lot of times police officers are chasing these guys. 
and they uh, and they throw these guns all over the place, the neighborhoods. Uh, they sometimes they leave them in cars, they stash them in cars. So she's trained to, to find that black smoke and powder. So she'll do uh, searches inside vehicles, outside of vehicles, backyards, alleys, all over the city. She's trained to do all that. She does what's called a, a passive alert. So when she finds the greatest source of the black smokeless powder, she sits. Her reward is she loves the ball. She gets a tennis ball and uh, she'll do anything for that tennis ball. <laughs> She's looking for yeah. But she's they're trained off of finding the powder. And then as the dogs get seasoned, they start looking for man work, uh, our guinea pigs in the bite suit, and uh, what Cliff's going to do is basically train the dog, no, that's one of us, we train our own dog, they're going to stand, and when Cliff comes the dog in, he'll give a command on what to do. Okay, he's going to basically... <laughs> Officer search him was to maybe push this officer away and try to run the dog. 